Hey guys, uh, welcome to how to inspect part of the Datsun Z buyer's guide episode. Uh, this is part two. Um, I run a channel right here on YouTube that shows uh, novice mechanics how to restore a Datsun Z, but if you're in a market for one, uh, this is the episode to watch. Um, if you haven't checked out part one of this episode, then uh, I would recommend you do that because in there we go over everything that you need to figure out before seeing one of these in person. Um, I've always wanted to do this episode, and I'm actually really excited to be able to do this um, since I, I see this question all the time. How do you inspect a Datsun Z to make sure that it's a solid project car? Uh, and yes, there are some Datsun Z specific things that you should be looking out for, but uh, most of the inspection uh, procedure is a standard procedure for inspecting any car that is more than 30 years old. Uh, or 40 years old in, in the Datsun Z's case. Um, if I were to go over in detail everything that you should check out for uh, in these old cars, uh, this video would be hours long. So what I'm gonna do is try to focus on um, how to check for uh, rust damage, of, uh, the condition of the frame, um, and um, checking for the originality of the car. Now, the, in my mind, the only thing that's going to make you or want to walk away from a project car uh, is really rust. Uh, and that is the most important topic to cover, so I'm going to cover that in this video. Um, everything else, including like the mechanical condition of the car, um, those are all relatively easy and cheap fixes compared to frame damage uh, and rust damage. So uh, in this video, I'm going to cover uh, the most common spots uh, or the most popular spots that you should be looking at when you're looking for uh, frame and rust damage. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about subjects like test driving the car um, and looking at the, the, the quality of the engine and the transmission and all that stuff because it is not really something that is specific to the Datsun Z. But um, if you're interested in uh, those subjects, you should be looking out for uh, kind of future uh, episodes on my channel because what I'll be doing is going through kind of the more popular uh, checks like compression testing and timing checks and how to be able to do that on the Datsun Z. So one more thing that I should mention at this point, um, if you're new to buying a uh, classic car or an old car, there's no shame in paying for help when it comes to inspection, especially um, if you don't live too close to the car that you're interested in. Um, there are inspection services that you can hire to get a detailed report on the car, and they're generally around $200, unless you're looking for a, um, a model-specific expert. Uh, but what they'll do is they'll go check out the car for you, uh, test drive it, take plenty of photos of it, and actually write you a report that points out every little detail that you should know about. And I know $200 sounds expensive, but it may uh, end up saving you uh, a whole lot more uh, by helping you walk away from a disaster uh, that you can't recognize, or uh, if you have to make a costly trip out there just to check out the car. So um, again, if you even after watching this video, you don't feel totally comfortable, there's no shame in paying for help, and uh, there's plenty of services out there uh, for that. Okay, uh, let's first go over what you'll need to actually bring to the inspection. Uh, first is uh, you'll want to wear some uh, dirty clothes uh, or old clothes that you don't mind getting dirty because you'll be doing uh, some crawling around on the car and uh, you don't want to get your nice clothes dirty. Uh, second is bring a flashlight for obvious reasons. You're going to be checking out a lot of uh, places uh, in the car that doesn't have direct sunlight so um, a flashlight is going to help you inspect and also a pair of gloves because uh, you'll be doing a lot of poking and prodding and um, these cars are really dirty, uh, probably, so uh, you want to keep your hands clean. Uh, also a white paper towel is a good idea, uh, first to kind of wipe your hands and uh, also to check some fluids like engine oil, uh, but make sure that it's white so that uh, you can get a a clean sense of what the fluid looks like and if it has any contaminants in it. So white paper towels. You'll also want to bring a magnet. Um, this is mostly to check the sheet metal, um, to check for Bondo, uh, especially near the, the wheel wells, but uh, it can also be uh, useful for detecting any uh, metal flakes in any fluid uh, so this is, uh, this is a good idea to bring it along as well. 
All right, one more mandatory stuff. You'll want to bring some simple tools like this adjustable wrench uh, and a screwdriver set uh, because you're gonna be doing some, um, at least very simple work on the car, um, like removing the battery. And you, want, you definitely wanna have tools ready uh, for you to do that. All right, here's some optional stuff that you can bring uh, along with you, but isn't completely necessary. And this is uh, because you're inspecting a four-year-old car, not going to your local dealership to brand, uh, or to pick up a brand new Camry. Um, so the first thing is engine oil. Uh, you might wanna bring some engine oil with you because um, if you wanna drive the car home or if you wanna inspect the engine oil in the car, uh, you want to have some with you. Um, actually, I have 10W30 here, which will work perfectly fine uh, for the Datsun Z, or you can also work with 10W40, depending on the season. Um, you might also want to bring some antifreeze because again, uh, these are old cars, and um, or just a jug of water. Um, so you can refill the, the coolant if you decide to, uh, to, to take it home with you, or if you want to drain the coolant to check the, the status of the coolant, uh, you definitely kind of want to refill that for the owner, uh, even if you don't uh, end up taking it home. So you'll want to bring along a plastic drain pan um, or an actual drain pan instead of a the bin like this, but you'll need it to, um, if you have a chance to kind of drain some fluid and uh, take a look at what condition it's in. All right, um, you might also want to bring a spark plug socket. So this is a specialized uh, socket that's gonna help you pull the spark plugs on the car. And the spark plug size for the Datsun Z is 13 uh, 16th inch. So um, if the owner lets you, uh, you're definitely gonna want to pull the spark plugs to check the condition of them. Um, it's really not that hard and it's not that invasive of a test. Um, so if you have this uh, along, you, um, you definitely wanna bring that. All right, now we're getting to the, I guess the really optional stuff. Um, one thing that you could bring is a, uh, whoa, a compression test kit. Now, um, most of us don't have compression test kits uh, laying around in the house. And the good news is actually you can borrow these from the, the local AutoZone or the um, um, Advanced Auto Parts or any, any kind of auto parts. Uh, it usually has a compression uh, test kit like this so you can um, do a compression testing on the car. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, um, I'm going to uh, make a separate video on how you can do the compression testing on the Datsun Z so that you know the engine is in reasonable shape. All right, so you prepared all of this stuff and brought it with you and you just met the owner and the car and uh, you're finally ready to dig in. But not so fast because before you crawl onto that car, let's check if the owner has been straight with you on a few details. Um, first, ask for the title and inspect, and this should be the very first thing that you should do when you meet the owner. Uh, you should not only be checking to see that the owner has the title in hand, and this is for obvious reasons, but also uh, if the owner stated that the title is clean and it's not a salvage, uh, you should check that the title supports that claim. And also, by the way, the title should also have an odometer reading, but keep in mind that the odometer in the car uh, it actually turns over or completely resets every 100,000 miles. And there's not really a good way to tell how many times the odometer has spun over. So if the owner doesn't have meticulous documentation of the car's history, don't take the owner's word for it uh, if he or she says that uh, it is less than, let's say, 100,000 miles. Most likely, it has turned over uh, once or even twice. All right, now that we got that over with, uh, let's actually get to inspecting the car. And as you can see uh, on my car, I'm actually in the middle of doing a uh, cylinder head rebuild with a machine shop. So the engine head, uh, or the cylinder head isn't actually here, but let's pretend that it is. Um, so the very first thing that you want to check is the originality of the engine components. Now, if the, uh, the owner has already told you that the, origin uh, the engine isn't original or it's very obvious that it's not a Datsun engine, you can kind of skip this step. But what you want to do is match uh, the, um, the block um, type and the cylinder head type to uh, the car and what you were expecting to see. So I know that my car is a 1977 Datsun 280Z. What that means is I should be able to find uh, an engine that says L28. And that is the, um, the cylinder block type that came on um, 280Zs, well, hence the name 280Z. Um, 
So what you'll be able to see here if you clean this up is uh, a DL28 casting along with a serial number for the block. Now, unfortunately, there's not really a good way to tell beyond the, the, the block type uh, exactly if this is the original engine that came with the car because these serial numbers don't really match up to the VIN number like they used to in the Datsun and Zs um, or the earlier Datsun and Zs, I think in the 240s and the 260s. So if, you, if you're looking at a 240 and a 260Z, you should be able to match that serial number to the VIN number uh, here, or at least I, that's what I'm told. Um, but at least for the 280Zs, um, they stopped matching those numbers, so I, there's not really a good uh, way for uh, me to be able to tell. But this engine is really pretty grimy. It doesn't look like it has been replaced, so I'm gonna go ahead and just assume that this is the original block. Not that it matters all that much to me anyway. Um, so if you come over here, you should be able to see that this is an N42 block, which is what I was expecting. And if, there, if the cylinder head was here, I should be able to see that this is a, um, that I have a N47 cylinder head. I believe N47 cylinder heads came on 77, 78s, and uh, on some 280Zs, uh, but you should kind of look up this information uh, and know what cylinder head and what engine block uh, you should be expecting to see in the vehicle and if it's if you find that that's not what's on the car you should be uh, You should be assuming that that is not the original um, The engine component that came on the car that doesn't necessarily mean that it is uh, trouble um, Doesn't necessarily mean that the engine is in bad shape um, Of course, these are four year old cars uh, a lot of them have uh, had modifications done to them um, but if the owner was telling you that everything is original, you know that's not true by looking at the, the at least the, the engine block and the cylinder head uh, codes. All right, along the same veins, um, if you look over here, uh, there is a paint color number. Uh, mine, I think, says 305, and that's, uh, that is a color code that's going to tell you what the original color of the car was. Now, I know that my car has been repainted. It actually hasn't had a great paint job, but it has been repainted. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, and I th believe the 305 is this color right here that you see in the engine bay that they didn't bother. It, obviously, it was not a frame off restoration. They just kind of covered up the car and painted it quite poorly, actually. Um, I know that the, the car looks uh, pretty okay in the videos, but if you look closely, the car definitely has been repainted and it hasn't been really a quality paint job. So if you were uh, for some reason looking for that original paint and if you want to see what the original color of the paint was, you can. this is where you can tell. All right, so now let's actually get to uh, the inspection and um, I think where you should start is uh, the panel gaps. Now, um, unlike the, the cars of uh, modern days, uh, you can't really look up the VIN number and um, try to get a sense for what kind of accidents the car has been in. Um, again, that whole Carfax system was developed after these cars were produced, so uh, there's no really a record for them. But luckily, uh, these cars from the 70s tend to have massive panel gaps and it's fairly easy to tell whether or not this car has been in a uh, big accident. So what you wanna do is check these panel gaps and make sure that they are even. Um, crooked panel gaps is, is what's, the, what's gonna tell you whether or not the car has been in a big accident. Um, so my panel gaps look fairly even, um, but you should also check um, the, um, well, my car doesn't have a hood, but if the car does have a hood, you should be able to see that the, the panel gaps over here are fa fairly even, that this, um, this frame, uh, the radiator support isn't crushed in or bent. Now, if you look at um, the sides of the engine compartment, these are the frame rails that go in. Now, most, uh, if these cars have been in an accident, most likely it'll be a frontal collision. Uh, what that means is you might be able to uh, see that some of these frames are bent, um, especially over here, or you can check the bumpers. Um, it should be fairly intuitive, um, but that's the very first thing that you should check. All right, so the number one thing that you should be uh, looking out for when you're inspecting these cars is definitely rust. Um, these cars rust very easily, and uh, where does it rust the most? 
right here under the battery tray. Uh, you can see that my car um, it has some rust damage to it. Now this, uh, this spot under the battery tray rusts the most because the battery acid um, tends to eat away at the painted surface of the metal and over time it exposes the bare metal. What that means is uh, you're uh, usually going to see a uh, hole just like this one. Now um, from all the cars that I've seen, this one actually isn't that bad. I've seen much worse. Um, but if the battery acid has eaten away, not only just at this uh, sheet metal here, but if it has eaten through the firewall, which uh, this one hasn't yet, um, it needs to be addressed pretty soon, but um, this it seems to be mostly cosmetic damage. The, another area that you should check right here is, um, is right here, uh, where this is the actual frame rail. If the battery acid has impacted this, um, this frame rail and you see holes in this section, uh, you might actually wanna stay away from that car and stop the inspection right there um, because that is not going to be very easy to solve and the car probably has structural issues. So um, you can, again, I, if you can see um, the extent of the damage here, you can actually also go underneath the car and, uh, and see the damage from underneath. Again, it seems to be mostly just uh, kind of sheet body metal damage, but if you get the sense that it is more than that, uh, then you should, you should be ready to walk away. While you're in the engine compartment, you also want to check uh, this area right here underneath the master cylinder and the brake booster. Um, the, the brake fluid also, if it leaks, is terribly corrosive and it can eat away uh, at the, um, the paint and of course just like the battery acid, it's going to cause some damage to uh, the metal. So what you want to check here is uh, the frame rail that sits right underneath the, the master cylinder and kind of the, the sheet metal around it. Now, it, it seems like at least this car, um, you can kind of poke around it to, uh, or with uh, something harder than your finger to get the sense for uh, how thick the metal is. And you, um, again, if you see frame damage, um, again, the rust, um, you're gonna see rust on these cars. It, it's just, there's not a single uh, Datsun Z uh, that doesn't have rust on, uh, on the surface. But what you want to check is these frame rails. These are the kind of the backbones of the car. And if you get the sense that these uh, frame rails um, are uh, rusted through, then that is a um, very expensive problem to fix. So check under the battery tray and check under the, um, the master cylinder, essentially on both sides of this, uh, the engine compartment. Uh the next place that you want to check are frame rails underneath the car. So let me get under here. So this is the frame rail that extends from the engine compartment all the way to the backside of the car. So this is also where it rusts a lot because um, these tend to get damaged from um, just running over things on the road. And it is, so you can see that this one isn't completely straight, but it hasn't eaten uh, all the way through. So I know that the, the car is structurally sound, um, but you know, these frame rails are never really in the perfect shape that you uh, want them to be. And also while you're down here, you wanna check the floorboards. Um, the best way to check the, the floorboards is actually to get inside uh, and rip up the carpet. But in most cases, uh, the owner might not be so comfortable letting you do that. So what you can do is get under here, um, take a rock or something, and just knock against these floorboards to see um, if it has any holes. So I, I kind of see that there aren't uh, any holes that have eaten through to the cabin of the car. Um, but these, floor, these uh, frame rails and the, the floor pans um, they're rarely perfect, so you kind of have to kind of take it um, um, or use some subjective judgment based on the pricing of the car. Now, I will say this, um, since these floorboards and frame rails are so um, commonly destroyed, uh, there are a bunch of companies out there that sell uh, replacement floorboards and uh, kind of frame rails that go underneath the car. Uh, these are just kind of weld on frame rails that go above 
the existing frame rails um, that, that help support the car and keep it straight. Now, that is not necessarily an easy or a cheap job. Uh, they could cost thousands of dollars to do it correctly. Um, so you kind of definitely want to make sure that the, the frame rails aren't completely rusted in. They have holes in them or they're bent out of shape because um, that could add uh, thousands to um, the repair costs. All right, the next area that you want to check is uh, in the trunk actually. So another very common rust spots are these, uh, these areas uh, right underneath the hatch. Now it's again very common to see uh, rust eating through uh, in this body panel here, uh, which um, you see some uh, damage right here that it's kind of flaking, but again, it's not anything that has uh, eaten all the way through. But these are very common areas. And, and of course, not only here, but also the door jams, um, especially right in here where it's kind of the rotter uh, runs um, throughout the door jam and it's, it's also very common to see uh, rust here if you're not uh, looking very carefully. So make sure that you check you know both doors uh, all of the door jams and um, it's, I, I didn't find it necessary to actually remove this aluminum panel here to see what's going on underneath just because it looks fairly solid. But uh, this might be a good thing to kind of just uh, take off uh, to inspect if you're not sure. So let's go back to the, the, the trunk area. Uh, and before you close the hatch, there's uh, something else that you need to check. So you need to actually, it's actually pretty easy to um, remove the carpet in this area. And there's a very good reason for you to do so. So if you remove this, you'll find something like this. And if you lift it up, you'll find the spare tile or the spare tire. Um, you, uh, I'm not gonna remove this right now, but what you wanna do is actually remove this uh, spare tire lift it up and see what's going on underneath the spare tire because that, uh, that I guess the, the trunk floor can, is also a very um, popular spot for rust. So again, kind of rust around these areas isn't structural damage. So there's nothing to, uh, it's not anything to, I guess, walk away from, but you should know that, uh, you should know all about these um, common rust spots. You're also going to want to check uh, underneath what's called a cow panel, and that is this panel right here. Now, this, uh, this cow panel is held in uh, by some screws, and you're gonna have to remove the wipers, so it's not easy uh, when you're doing an inspection to actually be able to see underneath. But since you have this flashlight, what you can do is just shine it through I know you can't really see uh, with the camera right now, but what you want to do is uh, just check for uh, any obvious rust that's underneath uh, this cowl panel. And uh, if the car is, seems to be in bad shape and you kind of saw rust underneath the, this panel here, if you kind of sense that it hasn't been sealed properly, this, um, this panel might be actually worth you uh, removing to see because um, the, the damage that uh, starts inside of the car in this general area, again, it's going to be expensive uh, if you want to actually deal with that. So uh, remove the cowl panel if you really must, but you should be able to just kind of get a general sense just by shining a, um, a flashlight through. All right, last thing that you should check uh, when you're looking for rust. Now, um, it, you've kind of seen the underneath uh, of the car. Again, your eyes shouldn't really be only limited to the floorboards and, and the frame rail. You should just be generally looking for, again, places where the rust actually has completely eaten through because that is a sign of uh, more damage. But uh, you should now uh, be looking for damage to the actual sheet metal. Now, these, the, the rust on the sheet metal like this uh, frame here isn't as serious as damage to the frame rail, but um, you should be checking anyway. Um, so popular spots for rust, of course, is uh, right around the wheel well where kind of the water and the mud splashes. 
and uh, eats away at the sheet metal. Um, another spot is right here. Right behind the wheels. Um, so this is what's called a mud flap. Uh, this actually is supposed to keep uh, kind of the water and the mud out of the crevices, but you know, eh, obviously mine hasn't been replaced and this it really isn't even functioning. So you kind of lift this up and see what you're dealing with uh, underneath. Mine seems to be uh, fairly solid. Um, and of course, the, um, you should be checking kind of all of these spots to make sure that nothing has uh, eaten all the way through. And do this for all four uh, wheel welds. And if you look at the back wheel, this seems to be kind of in better shape. Um, but again, it's not gonna be perfect if you're looking for a project car. So look, just look very thoroughly. And mine seems to be in pretty good shape. Oh, uh, just one thing. <laughs> you see all of this paint overspray? If you're not sure if your car has been repainted, um, ch chances are they didn't do such a perfect job on the paint job uh, and the masking off. So uh, you're gonna, uh, I, at least I found it very easy to tell that it's like the car hasn't been repainted. Not only because of overspray, uh, overspray like this, but also if you look closely here, you can kind of see that even the, the body molding hasn't really been taken off when the, the car was being repainted. So you're gonna see uh, signs like that if the car has been repainted and if it wasn't a frame off restoration. And if it had a frame off restoration, you probably wouldn't even looking at it because it is out of your price range because you're looking for a Project Z. When you're inspecting the body panels, uh, what you want to be on the lookout for is something called rust bubbles. It's where even if the car has been repainted, uh, you can tell that the, the rust from, uh, these cars tend to rust from inside out. So uh, you should be looking out for spots where you can tell that the, the rust is just bubbling up to the surface. And I'm trying to find, oh, here it is. So this is, um, is something that, uh, that I, I didn't quite notice when I was buying the car, but I, I wish I had, not that it's a huge deal. Um, so you can see that here, the, the rust is just kind of bubbling up underneath the surface. The common areas that you're gonna find this are not only underneath the cowl panel, uh, but areas right here, um, again, right at the wheel wells, or especially behind it. And I don't see any on my car, but uh, it is very common to see it on the trunk hatch uh, in places like this. Um, so just be kind of uh, on, be on the lookout for irregular um, surfaces where it should be completely smooth. And if you find rust spots, you can kind of poke your fingernail at it and it should kind of crust over. All right, so that was kind of the, the key highlights of how you should be looking at the, the quality of the body panels and the sheet metal, uh, the frame, and any rust damage that may have been um, done to the car. Now, it is impossible for me to go over every single area, but I just keep in mind that you need to be thorough. But also keep in mind that not every rust problem is something is a reason for you to walk away. And it seems very obvious, but you need to be able to differentiate between superficial surface rust um, and rust that has been done to kind of the sheet metal that isn't necessarily a, uh, a weight holding part of the car and more serious types of rust like uh, damage to the frame rails and the, the frame rail damage, especially if the rust has eaten all the way through, it might actually be good enough reason for you to walk away from the car or pr consider purchasing it as a parts car. Because um, you now these Datsuns are getting more expensive, but they're not so expensive that uh, these are super rare and um, you should be trying to save um, a, a car that's in very bad shape. And you can probably find a car that is uh, in reasonably good structural condition for much cheaper than what it would take to find uh, or what it would take to restore a car that has had extensive rust damage uh, and be able to get that to uh, a rust-free uh, quality project. So keep that in mind. Learn to differentiate between the different types of rust.
So now that we're done uh, looking for frame damage and uh, the kind of the more common rust spots on the car, what you're going to want to do uh, in, this, uh, in the next part of the inspection is actually turn the car over. Now, that part I can't show you because obviously I don't even have a cylinder head in the car uh, and I can't turn the car over or go out for a test drive with you guys, uh, but I will be making future episodes on this topic, so um, if you're interested, you know, please subscribe and, um, and stay in touch because we will be covering not only those kind of more mechanical inspection topics, but also doing uh, things like compression testing and uh, checking for the timing, um, looking at spark plug conditions and stuff like that. Again, isn't necessarily anything Dauphin Z specific, but um, again, if you're new to this, those are kind of the topics that you'll want to learn and be able to do when you're uh, inspecting these cars in person. So, um, be on the lookout and I'll see you guys next time.